Hello, my name is Henk Reimers and I'm with the Force Research Center at Chalmers University of Technology. In this presentation, I will describe a novel detector for coherent optical communications in the presence of nonlinear phase noise. This is joint work with Nan Yang, Yang Gong, Johnny Carut, Pontus Johannesson, Magnus Carlsen, Erika Grell, and Peter Andriksen. The motivation for this research lies in the need to improve spectral efficiency of fiber optical communication. While current systems typically work with on off keying with low spectral efficiency but simple hardware, researchers are now considering coherent communication with high order modulation formats, such as 16 QAM. However, such formats will require more sophisticated signal processing and are more susceptible to nonlinear effects in the fiber. The system we consider consists of multiple fiber spans, with every fiber span comprising single mode fiber, dispersion compensating fiber, and an amplifier. The optical signal is subjected to a number of effects. First of all, additive noise in the optical amplifiers. Secondly, dispersion within the fiber, including chromatic dispersion and polarization mode dispersion. And finally, nonlinear rotations due to the interaction between the fiber and the optical signal. Assuming the dispersion is compensated in the optical domain, we have a simplified model shown here. The fiber loss and amplifier gain are assumed to cancel out, so all that remains is a nonlinear effect proportional to the power and additive noise applied successively per span. We use a vector notation as we assume that we can transmit on two polarizations at the same time. The state of the art receiver for such a system is the back propagating receiver, which compensates for the deterministic effects in the system. Our goal is to develop a receiver that also accounts for stochastic effects. We can express the observation as a simple function of the transmitted symbol and the intermediate unobserved states at the end of every fiber span. After some math, we can express the observation as a function that contains a transmitted symbol, a deterministic rotation, and two types of angular noise, a very small noise-noise interaction and a more significant noise-signal interaction. These figures show exactly what the received signals look like for different input powers, with rotated constellations. If we look more closely, we realize that the noise signal rotation is Gaussian with known mean and known variance. However, the rotation is correlated with the additive noise. This makes receiver design challenging. We will address the problem from a Bayesian inference point of view. Let us first fix the language. In Bayesian inference, we have an unknown, say x, and an observation, say y. Both are random variables, so we can express the joint distribution in two ways using Bayes' rule. The most important function is the posterior, telling us what we know about x given the observation. The posterior is a function of x for a given observation. The other functions include the likelihood function, the evidence, and the prior. The latter tells us what we know about x before observing y. In many problems, the posterior is hard to describe due to the high dimensional nature of x. For that reason, we are often interested in the marginal posteriors of the components of x. Given these marginal posteriors, we can make decisions, for example, by taking the mean or the mode of the marginal posteriors, which give us the MMSE or the map estimates. It is clear that the marginal posteriors play a crucial role. And as we will see, factor graphs are a tool to efficiently compute these marginals. We will now describe factor graphs. Consider a real valued function with four variables that factorizes in a certain way. F could be a joint posterior. From this factorization, we can draw a factor graph. We draw a factor vertex for every factor and a variable vertex for every variable. When a variable appears in a factor, we connect the corresponding vertices with an edge. For example, x1 appears in fa, fb, fc, so we draw the following edges. On this factor graph, we can run a message passing algorithm called the sum product algorithm. The arrows visualize the flow of the messages. It is important to note that messages are functions of the corresponding variables. For example, the message from fc to x3, if x3 is a continuous variable, could look like this. The message in the other direction could look like this. 
It turns out that if you multiply both messages, you get the marginal of x3. More mathematically, we have messages from variable vertices to factor vertices, labeled mu. Here, an outgoing message is simply the product of incoming messages. We also have messages from factor vertices to variable vertices. Now the outgoing message involves multiplying the incoming messages with a factor and summing out all the variables except the one of interest. Of course, summation should be replaced with integrals for continuous variables. Finally, the marginals are obtained by multiplying the two messages on an edge. We emphasize that messages are functions of the variables. So a typical message for a binary variable would look like this. A typical message for a continuous variable could look like this. One may wonder how to represent the latter type of message in a computer program. Different approaches are employed. One can consider a grid and evaluate the message in the grid points. This leads to a vector that represents the message. More practical approaches involve approximation by known distributions, such as a mixture of Gaussians, or by a list of samples or particles. As an aside, we mentioned that messages are often transformed and normalized, and that when a factor graph has cycles, the sum product algorithm may fail. We are now ready to develop a receiver for the problem of interest. We first recall the model. Based on this model, we can write down the joint distribution of the input and all the intermediate unobserved variables given the output. This distribution is now easy to factorize, and from this factorization we can draw the factor graph. Now consider an observation, R2. The most naive thing to do is just to neglect the nonlinear effects and choose the closest constellation points for your decision. In our receiver, we will compute the messages, however. The message for the variable x2 is shown through a particle representation. Since x2 and r2 are simply related by Gaussian noise, x2 has a mean r2 and a variance equal to the variance of the noise. Now the message for the variable r1 is found by rotating the particles, where the rotation per particle is proportional to the power. Then we compute the message for x1 by adding noise. And finally, the message for A. Given this message, we can compute the a posteriori distribution. In our case, we did this by approximating the cloud of samples by a bivariate Gaussian and evaluating this Gaussian for every one of the 16 quant points. This then leads to our final decision. Note that when there is no noise, all the sample clouds collapse to points, and we recover the traditional backpropagation method. Due to this relation, we call our new method stochastic backpropagation. We now evaluate the symbol error rate as a function of the input power for a system with 22 spans using single polarization 16 quam. We see in the blue curve that neglecting the nonlinearity is not an intelligent choice and leads to high error rates. Performing traditional backpropagation reduces the error rate significantly. Stochastic backpropagation is able to improve even further, leading to up to two orders of magnitude reductions in the symbol error rates and a very different optimal input power operating point. Here we show similar results for dual polarization 16 quam. We see similar trends with again significant performance improvements. In conclusion, we have proposed a new detector for coherent optical communication in the presence of nonlinear phase noise. This detector is suitable for any constellation and exhibits improved performance compared to the conventional backpropagation receiver. Our future work will include the impact of linear dispersive effects. Thank you for your attention.